Ladies and gents, boys and girls, hello and welcome to Rider Guider. I'm Neil, your host for this week's shenanigans. And this week, I'm bringing you to Wollonga Hill, made world famous by the Tour Down Under. But interestingly, it's also used by hill climbists of a different nature, people who like to do this. This does look like a whole lot of fun, but unfortunately, this is not the Isle of Man so we're not allowed to enter using our version of two wheels. However, when it's open to the public, it's game on. So today, I'm taking you up the hill. Now, it's not a road I've travelled more than a couple of times, so this won't be perfect lines, nor will I likely be in the absolute perfect gear all the time. But that's a good thing, because after I've shown you the hill, we'll discuss some cornering tips, some lines, where I did well, and where I might have been able to do a little better. All to help keep you safe when riding your motorbike. I'll shut up now and head out on the course. Sorry, ride carefully up the hill. Let's go. Stop, stop. Let's have a look at this picture just before we go any further. What do we see? A beautiful sweeping left hand bend. We've got clues as to where it's going. We've got a tree line here. We've got an arm core here and it goes all the way down to the left. It suggests that that road is going all the way up, straight up the hill. Nice sweeping left hand bend. However, there's a big clue right here. Now, that suggests we need to also be taking notice of road signs they are very useful i know it sounds a little bit obvious but we don't always look for them that is very important because i'm going to show you now where this bend actually goes the thing about this is the rule when you're riding your bike is to always be able to stop in the distance you can see on your side of the road okay so let's ride the rest of the hill So let's initially cover off on vanishing points. These are something that even if you're an accomplished rider, you'll use all the time, even subconsciously. And for those interested, here are some vanishing points. Okay, so, vanishing point on the left. This is the last bit of road that you can see. Beyond that point, it's vanished. Same here on the right hand bend, beyond that point the road has vanished moving along left hand bend into a right hander you'll note the arrow the vanishing point moves from left to right hand side of the road as we go around this corner and accelerate you can see the vanishing point goes off into the distance here's a right hander to left hander right to left the vanishing point moves from right to left and here's another example right bend to left bend Basic rules for vanishing points. 
The most important is, if you're into or approaching a bend and the vanishing point is getting closer to you, you are going too fast and you need to scrub off speed. If the vanishing point is staying at the same distance away from you, you can hold your speed, because that means the curve in the road isn't getting any sharper, nor is it straining up. So, at that point, you need to wait for the vanishing point to move away from you, which means you are safe to increase your speed. The road's straining up. By all means, watch this again, see how I change my speed through these bends to account for the distance I am from the vanishing points. Now it's time to get to grips with the actual technique for making your bike go around a corner. We're going to look at road positioning, shifting your weight, and what actually makes your bike turn. Your steering technique. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share a life-saving tip for when you find yourself in a bend going too fast and running out of road. Every biker has been there at some point. So as you can see, when I go around a bend, I'm more McDoan than Mark Marquez in that I tend to lean the bike and keep my upper torso more upright for a bend. This gives me a couple of advantages in that it allows me to get a better view of the road ahead and also means I'm not leaning my head towards or, God forbid, in to the path of vehicles coming in the opposite direction. We're not talking here about short circuit racing. This is about decent, skillful cornering on public roads. And for newer or less confident riders, this technique will feel a lot less intimidating than feeling like you need to lean with or even lean off your bike to get it around a bend. On a side note, I've never found that I've needed to hang off or lean over until I'm on the edge of my tyres. A great mate of mine uh, once said to me that if you have a smidge of unused rubber, i.e. chicken strips, on the edge of your tyres, it suggests you're pretty much taking decent lines and reading the road properly. We've touched on reading the road already with vanishing points. So let's now look at shifting our weight and then road positioning. We can overcomplicate describing how to turn a motorbike. You'll hear people talk about weight transfer. And simply put, pretty much any movement from a rider in the saddle, either to the left or right, is transferring weight. You can lean at your hips, dropping a shoulder, or shuffle your ass in the saddle side to side. And some of this can depend on what bike you're riding, as it can be easier to move around in the saddle on an adventure bike like mine, or a race-derived road bike, whereas it might be more difficult to do that on a cruiser. But basically, any amount of body movement, the slightest pressure to your foot pegs, can help to change the line you're taking. Experimenting and practicing is imperative, which I'll come to shortly. Let's look at road positioning. This should never be random. You should always be considering which is the best line to take and not just be happy you're within your lane. Being intricate within your lane and learning great lines will improve anyone as a rider. Taking a ride through some bends like in this clip, we must also take into account other vehicles and regardless of wanting to take the best line for progress and smoothness, we need to adjust position for safe gaps between us and vehicles coming in the other direction. This is known as equalising the space. You'll see here where my best line would be position 5 on the left hander but I stuck with 3 to allow space between me and the approaching car coming the other way. However, when we have a clear road, we can take the most efficient lines through a bend. And to be fair, it's not an exact science. For example, if you're in a series of bends, when you're changing direction left to right, you might be able to take a tighter line, say, holding position one on a left-hand bend, knowing it sets you up in the correct position for the next right-hander. This is where reading the road ahead is important, so you can choose the best line. Keeping your eyes up and looking where you want to go, and very importantly, keeping your head level with the horizon. Amongst this, of course, there are other considerations. Road surface and weather conditions can mean you need to adjust your line. Or, and here's the biggie, if you're on an unfamiliar road, you'll need to adjust your approach and line through a bend to ensure you don't overcook it and put yourself at risk. That's when you'll be paying extra attention to them vanishing points and remembering that rule I mentioned earlier of being able to stop in the distance you can see on your side of the road. Okay, so now we're going to look at steering and how we can add an extra dimension to how we negotiate corners. And what I'm talking about here are the tighter, sharper bends as opposed to big sweeping curves. A couple of techniques you've already seen. I showed you my McDoan-esque counter leaning, which you can see is 
quite effective. And second up, I mentioned shifting body weight, but didn't go into that too much because shifting your weight around really doesn't make a significant enough real world change to how you can turn apart from in slower speed maneuvers or you may gain an advantage slightly if you're on a racetrack going much faster of course. The reason being once we're up to a reasonable speed the gyro effect and that rolling inertia takes over and this is a powerful force so much so as you can see here it keeps your bike upright to the extent a bike with rolling inertia can pretty much ride itself and trying to combat that energy by shuffling your ass back and forth, it's hardly worth the effort, especially when instead we have available to us what is the most effective way to get a bike to turn. Counter steering, or as some people refer to it, push steering. What's really awesome about counter steering is that it's very simple and easy to do. And if you've never tried it, you're about to discover a whole new level of control. And as I said earlier, an extra dimension to your riding. Normally, when we're riding along, we just place our hands nice and relaxed on the bars and balance the power delivery with the throttle and clutch. Other than that, we just enjoy the ride, adding very little manual input through the bars. However, here I'm riding along and I'm going to show you what happens when I put some physical input into the bars. The tiniest, tiniest smidge of a push forward on the right bar turns me right and the smidge of a push on the left bar turns me left. Counter to what you might expect. In fact, as you can see, I'm able to slalom using this technique. And I'm not giving this any more than just the slightest of pressure, alternating my push from right to left. So you wanna go right, push right. If you wanna go left, push left. It's amazing. On an actual bend, we just add that pressure and keep it added until we want to stop turning and then ease off the pressure or push slightly the opposite side to straighten up and if required, go to the other side for the next opposing bend. It's quite splendid. To say counter steering is effective is almost an understatement in that unless you actually practice, you can often find yourself turning sharper than expected. So counter steering is a way of extracting cornering performance from your bike. If you've not tried it before, you'll be surprised just how planted your front end will feel because counter steering really pushes the contact patch of your front tire. However, because of that, it's a dry weather technique for me. Counter steering is not a technique I'd even consider if on a wet or loose surface. Now for a life-saving tip. Nearly every biker at some point has found themselves heading into a bend too fast and running out of road. The worst case scenario is you're about to end up on the wrong side of the road into the path of oncoming traffic or off the road completely. This is either from over exuberant riding, racing your mates, misreading a bend on an unfamiliar road, it's an ass puckering situation. One thing you have to remember if you find yourself in that situation is your bike is probably still capable of making that bend. The limiting factor, not always, but often, is the rider. My tip in this situation is the application of the back brake. Not hard, but a steady, consistent press whilst looking up at where you want to go and steering towards it, even using the aforementioned counter steering. If you practice feathering your back brake through a bend nice and light, you'll feel how it improves your line. Do that on your bike to get a feel of how it performs. And then if at a later date you find yourself in that dangerous situation of overcooking a bend, you'll be well prepared and very likely able to ride round and survive to ride another day. Ultimately though, always ride within your limits and the limits of the road. And don't forget, keep an eye on them vanishing points. Thanks for watching Rider Guider. Give us a sub, a thumbs up and say hello in the comments. I'm Neil. See you on the next one.